Data entry is probably one of the most mundane tasks that's out there. It's really repetitive and it can get really boring really fast. In fact, this is probably one of the most hated jobs that's out there. But with the help of this new model from Anthropic called Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which many of us have heard of, it is truly possible to actually automate data entry. For the people who do not know, Claude 3.5 Sonnet is the most powerful model that's out there. It's offering improved intelligence, speed, and cost effectiveness. It's free to use at the moment, and it's great for complex tasks like coding and visual reasoning. This model introduces a feature called artifacts as well, and it's going to allow users to easily interact with AI-generated content. It's something that is even better than GPT-4 Omni. To showcase how powerful Claude 3.5 Sauna is, this is a demo that showcases someone creating a complete web app that lets you switch between different major LMs and even generate images using Flux, all without writing a single line of code. This was fully generated with Claude 3.5 Sonnet and it showcases the model's ability to handle complex tasks as well as automating the development process. Another area that the model excels in is data. This is where most models are having problems dealing with large amounts of data and it can struggle as models tend to hallucinate and can't really focus or keep track with a concise context window. However, with the new 3.5 Sonnet model, Data management and extraction just got way easier. Like you saw from the title of this video, I'm going to be showcasing a practical use case with the new Sonnet 3.5 large language model, as I will be utilizing it as a backbone for my automation, where I'm going to be showcasing how to extract data by utilizing the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. With the power of the large language model, it will easily elevate data extraction workflows easily. To help me create this, I will be utilizing a no-code platform that will easily help you automate any workflow with the help of AI. This is where I would like to introduce VectorShift, a tool that I love creating workflows with on this channel. I have made multiple tutorials on VectorShift where I automate email flows, create AI agents that can carry out various tasks, and so many other things where I truly recommend that you watch all these different videos, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. But VectorShift is definitely a great framework that will enable you to build AI solutions like an AI search engine, an AI assistant, an AI agent, a chatbot, and various other automations that can solve so many problems in your life as well as within your business. So with that thought guys, Let's get started and showcase how you can utilize the new Claude 3.5 Sonnet model with the help of VectorShift to automate data extraction. So let's get started. What I want you guys to do is head over to the VectorShift.ai website where you're going to be greeted with this nice web page. And what I want you guys to do is click on the get started button. This is where you're going to be prompted to create an account with your email address or with a Google account or GitHub. So once you have done that, we'll then get started with the next step now before we get started i definitely recommend that you take a look at the patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that we'll be releasing this week once you log in you're going to be greeted with your pipeline page which is your main dashboard of vector shift and this is where you're going to be able to manage all your automations as well as your chatbots you have a marketplace in which you can access pre-built templates for various automations various chatbots as well as various things that you can get started and implement into your own workflows you have the ability to upload your own knowledge base, manage different files, manage your chatbots and automations, but you're also able to manage different evaluation metrics and you can analyze what is happening with your automations. But in this case, what we're going to be doing is clicking on creating a new pipeline from scratch. So click on this addition sign on the top left corner of this panel, click on create a new pipeline from scratch. And you can see that you're going to be able to get all these other templates that we explored previously. For example, you can automate your Gmail, your Google Drive, or so many other cases. But in this case, we're going to be creating a pipeline from scratch. So once it has finished doing that, we can then proceed forward and start constructing our automation to automate data entry. And there we go. We have now been sent over to the vector shifts drag and drop UI in which we're going to be able to create our automation. Now previously, I actually made a video which showcased this exact same topic on automating data entry with VectorShift. But in today's video, I'm going to be updating that previous video with the new feature that VectorShift introduced called Forms. Forms are a new way for you to basically take different modalities from images 
to files, to text, to even voice. This means that this new approach is going to be more intricate and dynamic than ever before, meaning that you're going to be able to process way more than what you would have previously and what I've basically showcased in that previous video. Just to showcase what you can do with this new feature, just take a look at this demo video, which shows what we're going to be able to do. You can simply upload your own files and you're going to be able to extract various components that you can specify from your automation, such as the duration, the limitations, the billing date, or even the contract value. This is where it's going to be having the flexibility to analyze your data from images to voice to even your text. So let's get started and showcase how you can build this automation. In essence, we're going to be utilizing the new Claude 3.5 SANA model to manage data. We're going to be extracting data and have that large language model structure it into the desired format, which we can then have it sent to integrations like Google Sheets, as well as many of these other integrations. But in this case, I'm showcasing the new forms feature in which you can have it integrate the data entry too. Now, this entire process will be automated within VectorShift and it's going to allow you to run it recursively with a specific input. For example, it couldn't be set to run on a minutely, to a monthly, a weekly, or even a daily basis. Now, like I said before, for a typical large language model, it's hard for it to process large amounts of data. But for the Sonic 3.5 model, it's able to process large amounts of data without hallucinating. And to showcase this, I have this contract that is quite lengthy. It's a contract for a company that has multiple client agreements to work or buy from the company. Now this document has a lot of characters and a lot of numbers, and I will be having it so that the Sonnet model will extract four categories. This is where I'm going to have it so that it extracts the duration of agreements for certain clients. It's going to secondly focus on the limitations of liabilities for particular clients. It's going to focus on the billing start date. And lastly, the contract value where I will request it to break down the full pricing structure for each particular client. This way, I will be able to get a good extraction of different values and characters from the Sonnet model. Now, let's get started and place our input node and output node. This is quite foundational for any workflow to be functional where input queries are coming in from files, from voice, or from text or even from chatbots to an output that's generated with the help of an AI large language model node. Now, in this case, what we're going to be doing is just putting in one input node and putting in four output nodes. Now, the reason why I'm going to be putting four output nodes is because it's going to be outputting four different extractions from our input. Now, it's going to be able to process an input or an output of a contract, a billing date, as well as a description of the contract. Now, what we're going to be doing is also changing the type of the input node to a file so that people can place in a file and the AI will automate the data extraction process. Now, to help us do the extraction, we're going to be utilizing four different anthropic large language model nodes. So simply paste in four of these different nodes. You can paste it in in this order. And then we're going to be connecting all of them and giving it a system prompt. You can go ahead and change the model to the Sonnet 3.5 model. And once you have done that for all of them, we can then give it a system prompt. So I went along and I gave the large language model nodes a system prompt where I told it that you're an expert contract analyzer. You extract a piece of information, respond in a bullet point, and it's going to basically respond and extract in four different ways. You have one of the large language model node, which is going to extract the following, which is the duration of the context. The second large language model node is going to focus on extracting the limitations of liabilities. The third, third one will focus on, on the billing start date, and the last one will be the contract value. Now, to add these different prompts to connect the input and the outputs, what you want to do is just simply click on insert variable, give it a name, and you're going to be able to specify the name. In this case, it's a contract. So I specified that this variable is a contract. I simply clicked on just uh, attaching this input node to the output and then the response will be then sent over to one of the outputs over here which you can simply name as duration and just leave it as text in this case it's going to be a limitations of liability for the second large language model node and such forth it's quite self-explanatory billing and then the contract value you can also have it outputted as an image formatted text audio json or even a file
And in my previous video, I actually had it so that it was able to automate different data entries. And in this case, you can even have different things such as Google Sheets integrated. So go over to the integrations and you can paste in one of these nodes. You can even have it sent over to your Gmail account. And that's the great thing about VectorShift. You can automate and integrate various plugins and tools. So after you have made all your changes, you can simply just click on deploy changes and you can then export this pipeline. In this case, you can also run this pipeline to test out if it's functional, but let's go over and export this as a form. Last time we exported it as an automation as well as a chat bot, but in this case, we're going to be exploring the new feature of VectorShift, which is forms. So let's give it a form name. Let's say data entry and we can then create this form. You can see that it has now created this form, which will then simply have an input of a file and give us all of these different extractions, such as the limitations of liabilities, billing start date, contract value, as well as the duration. You can also configure these inputs and outputs as well as the buttons, as well as, as, well as the styling. So once you have specified all these different things, you can then export, you can go over and open this form up in a new own like i would say url standalone url or you can have it so that it has a protected sso authentication you can protect it with a password or you can even basically embed it into a website which is really useful now let's actually test this out to showcase what you can do with this so let's test this out let's feed it our own contract and let's see if it's going to be able to extract all these things such as the limitations of liabilities you can see that it started to extract the billing date it got the limitations of the liability, it got the contract value, and it also got the duration. In this case, you can copy all these different components, or you can even download it as a text file or even a Word file. And this is how you can automate a different component of your data entry with the forms feature of VectorShift. You can also have it so that it can output all these different inputs into Google Sheets, as well as many of these different integrations that's out there. But that's basically it for today's video on VectorShift and how you can automate your data entry processing. So with that thought guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and you got some sort of value out of it. I'll leave all the links that I used in today's video in the description below. Make sure you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access different subscriptions completely for free. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys really shortly. Peace out, fellas.